this computer. Okay. Five, four, three, two. Hello, and welcome to the Digital Free Thought Radio Hour on WOZO Radio, 103.9 LPFM here right here right in Knoxville. And we're recording this on Sunday morning, uh, February 27th, 2022. I'm Larry Rhodes, or Doubter5. And as usual, we have our co-host, Wombat, on the line with us. Hello, Wombat. I keep telling you I need D batteries. D batteries. No, I don't have an accent. <laughs> they do make them. And our guests today are um, George Brown, the two and a half. Welcome. We got the John Richards from across the pond in England. Welcome to the show. And we have Slew from Ohio. Welcome, Slew. Digital Free Thought Radio Hour is a talk radio show about atheism, free thought, rational thought, humanism, and the sciences. Conversely, we also talk about religion, religious faiths, God's holy books, and superstition. And if you get the feeling that you're the only non-believer in your time, well, you're just not. Here in Knoxville, we have a group of over a thousand of us, and we're in the Bible Belt. And we'll tell you more about our group after the mid-show break. Um, what's our topic for this week? Uh, How do uh, you charge I, your spiritual battery? And I think all the weird mechanics and questions and raised eyebrows that come with that question that will be a fun, we'll have a fun time going through the show with. But I guess before we get into it, you know, we spent a whole week surviving everything that's going on in the last week. Let's see how we've been since then. Uh, Slew Suffer, I don't know if you also want to change your name to what we were calling you last week. Why don't you reintroduce yourself, particularly with the name that you'd like to be using, and then tell me how your last week was. Um, Slew is fine. Um, okay. Yeah, I just go Slew for short. Got it. Uh, everything's been okay here, I guess. It's not bad. It's not bad. Yeah. Did you get more? I never go by Slewfoot. It's great. No. <laughs> uh, heck. Um, uh-huh. yeah. <laughs> okay, not bad. All right. Nice easy weekend. I hope you had some good uh what is it? The new movies that are coming out. I hope you didn't get spoiled on any of them like that. I know you strike me as a person who tries to keep up or you know, blacklisted on some of the new Marvel leaks that have been coming out. We don't want to pay attention to those and we won't discuss them on the show. Sounds good. John Richards, how you been? Fine, thank you. My hot news is that Global Atheist News yesterday got flagged for inappropriate content. No. You have to be over 18 to watch it. Oh, really? Oh, wow. (laughs) And that's because I embedded a clip of Bill Mayer in which he used the F word. Oh, Oh, goodness. Well, you could always, well, we can talk about how we could probably fix that on the back end, but that's, that's unfortunate. Though I would say this, we did have a really fun fundraiser. Uh, I believe before the last time we spoke. Would you like to give me an update? Yeah, yeah, we did. It was, I really enjoyed that. It went on for three and a half hours, and Ty came along and joined me and many other guests from different parts of the world. Swedish Steve was on there. I had somebody from Brazil, Ferdinand from Brazil, and uh, other places too. But And Ty gave us some of his music, because what we were doing was getting darker and darker, talking Uh-oh. about the religious harm that were people were, had suffered uh, and then we would lighten the mood up with a piece of lifting music and time with some of the suppliers of that so it was a great thing to do and we we've raised something approaching nine thousand dollars nice it wasn't just me it, it, very good I, yeah. I did three and a half thousand <laughs> i did three and a half hours <laughs> oh. <laughs> not three and a half thousand anything and then uh it moved over to your friendly neighborhood atheist in the u.s and for another four hours and then it went to australia for wow. another a, a bit extra lap as well so between us we we did quite well and it was in aid of recovering from religion which it was a very good charity that helps people to <sighs> get back to being themselves after the traumatic experience of being raised in and then having to escape from some weird religion. Wonderful. It was a really wonderful show. And thank you so much for having me on there. Well, I wonder, quick question. Could I simulcast that broadcast that we were on on my channel? That way, uh, broaden the audience a little bit. And then can people still donate? Yes. Yes and yes to both of those. Certainly. Yeah. You can, you can, um, how do you want it? You can have it 
as a file that you can upload or you can yeah. link it by the URL or I'll take it from your YouTube account and then just also yeah, broadcast yeah. it in mine as well. And yeah, then sure. also, no. yeah, recovering from religion. I would, I'm not telling you because we can't do call to action on radio, but Hey, it's a recommendation. There's a link there and check it out. I highly recommend it. Mm -hmm. uh, also you asked a question on there that I feel like I can revisit and probably answer a little better. We did mm -hmm. some demonstrations of the music that I made. And then there was some live video or live music or musicians that were there they were actually playing and singing at the same time too uh i just think there's such a great variety of talent in the atheist community and so like if these are things that really interest you i highly recommend that you check out that broadcast just for the 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 aspect of so much talent and energy that goes into not just recovering for religion but the mm. the, the humans that support it and and the body of talent that's there as well mm. larry putting you on the spot suspenders two weeks in a row what's going on you're blowing my mind also you're on mute I believe. Um, yeah i'm getting to that age where i get more pear-shaped and it's hard to keep my pants up so. there's no excuse for that <laughs> well, <Spender. laughs> well when your knees are bad and your hips are bad you know you can't mm -hmm. really do the proper exercise you need to do mm -hmm. i turned 72 in uh in may that's still a spring so, chicken you can still run for president next year well compared to george brown i'm a spring chicken yep <laughs> okay not bad not bad you'd make a great southern lawyer too i can oh, yeah. see this well oh, sure the over there. there you go <laughs> <laughs> how you been since last week have you been doing more video gaming oh yeah and i do it on the uh quest too uh i've been playing oh what is that um skyrim nice so that's a, a open open world just get on your little horse and ride around and fight the bad guys and it's it's a lot of fun i'm a mage this time so i don't have to do any swinging of swords and stuff which is kind of rough it's not bad but i have about 600 fun. hours in skyrim so yeah 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 yeah, yeah. awesome you can think hours into it so I've, looks already like played, i've already played it before in, in 2d this is my first time in 3d nice nice yeah. slew just gonna ask a quick question you look like a skyrim guy have you ever played that game i haven't i don't oh. i don't know much about it really but you would love it. You would love it. It has the best demonic gods. It has they have a whole suite yeah. of Daedric Pathion gods, and you can pick your favorite of like the worst people ever. It's great. You could actually then... become a vampire too. <laughs> <laughs> you can go a vampire, a werewolf, and yeah. like a, a bear wolf, which is also another one of the things that's been come too. It's great. It's really wonderful. George Brown, second and a half, just checking in on you. How you been since last week, my friend? Oh, you're on mute. All right. You're so, on mute, George. Can't hear you. Okay, here I am, guys. Um, <laughs> uh, well, in the United States, if I were a vampire, where would I go to get my blood? Would I have to go to Blood R Us or someplace like that? <laughs> Something like that. Yeah, yeah. Do they sell yeah. it at all these? I mean, <laughs> you know, if you. So, how you been? I, I don't have anything very unusual to report. Okay, well, I've I'll been just ordinary. I've been ordinary. Not ordinary is not bad, I, considering the health problems that you went through. And yeah, I, I mean, I love seeing you back I, at ordinary again. But 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 being an atheist in, in the Bible Belt, mm. in a little town in the Bible Belt, is you know it's really a challenge, mm. and and that that leads me to wonder how do I recharge my batteries as an atheist, or as a vampire, the, right? <laughs> or as a vampire <laughs> in the Bible Belt. I appreciate the transition. So we, you know, guys, I was looking to try to buy some batteries. I'm surrounded by rechargeable batteries at my desk. I got the non-rechargeables. I got C cell batteries that I've been trying to get. And I reminded me of a conversation that I had with uh, deeply held believers way back when, like about a year ago. Oh, look, we got more batteries all over the place where there was a concern. Like, we would have a conversation at a park about why they believe things and what got them to that belief. They'd realize my beliefs aren't very rational. However, I'm worried about completely abandoning them because then what would charge my spiritual battery? Because I have this need to feel a spiritual connection, but I don't know what could fulfill that if I were to leave my religion. And from talking to you as an atheist, I don't see if there's a way that I can have that same fulfillment that i so desperately need essentially they're saying like hey i have a god hole like society and my upbringing has made a god hole in me and i'm not seeing how atheists are filling that out and i and i was concerned to hear that because 
one, I don't see that as a God hole. I feel, I see, sort of see that as a hole that was punched by religion into, you know, you know, a, a non spiritual region and then claim to be, Hey, by the way, I just broke, I just made a hole. Let me tell you what can fill that. It's sort of like when a mafia comes into like a, a restaurant and they break like a, a, a dish or they set a fire and they're like, wouldn't it be a shame if that happened to every one of your stores? It's, it's that whole, you know, a situation. So what I would like to get is a feedback on how everyone fills their spiritual uh, battery or how they recharge themselves spiritually. Cause I can guarantee you atheists have a way of doing it in my head. It's healthier, more sustainable, and actually better for society. So let's see. Uh, I'm going to, I'm going to pick my poison. <laughs> Larry, please tell me how do you char- recharge your spiritual battery? Well, uh, you know the the, re- the word recreation uh, mm. is comes from recreating yourself, recreation, mm, uh, and that's good enough for most people. You, you take a bike ride, you go to a movie, you um, play a game, you get with, uh, with your friends and uh, play cards, whatever you want to. It's, it's a winding down recreation of your of your spirit um, without. And I, when I say spirit, I mean your emotional foundation, your outlook. Um, Christopher Hitchens once said, you can't, there's nothing you get from religion that you can't get from regular society. Um, and he, and he, what he meant was anything beneficial. Uh, there are a lot of things you can get from it that you don't want to get from regular society, like guilt and um, the belief in sin, things like mm. that. But that's that's my take on it just you know do it do what makes you feel better makes you uh recreate yourself get get more in kilter with society and yourself yeah i really really dig that and i'll also throw out another thing too like health things that you can do to make your body better like they always Mm -hmm. say in religion to treat your body like a temple well you know loving yourself could mean going to kfc every day for some people but i find that and KFC Kentucky Fried Chicken for our British listeners out there. <laughs> oh, you got them too. You got them too. Do you even, do you guys even know where Kentucky is? That's so bizarre for me. All right, yeah, all right. Yeah, yeah. That's where the Ark is. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's not a million miles from Tennessee. No, it's not. That's right. That's right. right next anyway. door. So mm-hmm. yeah, then yeah, basically, in my head, uh, loving yourself means taking good care of your body and getting doing what you can to like improve yourself physically, to reduce your health concerns, reduce your health risks, and try to be the best version physically of your body you possibly can be. Like working towards that is very, very good. John Richards, you we've had some controversial talks from you. It sounds like you don't even understand the concept of a spiritual battery. What do you mean by this? Well, I have great difficulty with the word spiritual. I mean, what does it mm. what does it mean? Mm. You can use it in four or five different ways. And and okay, I accept that you can be spirited, which you know, a horse might be spirited if it's full of energy, but I don't understand that this it's an imaginary hole for me. Mm. I think but... you were right when you suggested that it's like a protection racket, Ty. Because what's what's happened here is people have created this imaginary need right. for for spiritual fulfillment, whatever that is, <laughs> right. in order to be able to provide their imaginary filling and their cure. <laughs> they made an imaginary pie, and they are yes. selling you imaginary filling for the pie. Yes, yes, yeah. yes. Well, the, the other one of the other reasons that I don't like it is because the word spiritual is sometimes taken as something that ex-religious people sort of step down to, you know, mm. they, they leave their faith, but they still have a spiritual <laughs> belief. They th- right. still think there's, there's something, it, it may not be Christ or right. Muhammad, but they think there's something. So they still retain their spiritualness. Uh, and I think that's a sort of a halfway stage to atheism, which is, is really sure. redundant. Sure. There's no there's no step there. It should be a slide. <laughs> Larry, throw it in. Yeah, and most of uh, Eastern religions are spiritual, as it were. They're not uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, monastic or polytheistic. They they believe in the spirits of their selves and their four mm. foreparents, yes, forefathers, ancient yes. ones. Uh, they consider themselves very spiritual when it yes. comes to yin and yang and all that. But uh, they're atheistic basically because they don't believe in gods. Yeah, yeah. So if their spirits are all dead, 
Mm. There's, there's no no chance of recharging them, really, is there? Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, God is the living spirit. Oh, I know. I know. I totally get what you're saying, John. I'm just <laughs> saying there's some Christian back there that's like, well, I have the opposite thing of saying. I, I understand. When you work by magic, there, any any rule can be the exception. But yeah, I hear what you're saying. Slew, I'd be actually interested in hearing what you're saying about this. Do you understand the term spiritual? Have you ever heard of that before? And what now, do you think about it? Well, yeah. Uh, growing up in in Christianity and thing of everything, I've I've heard it quite a bit. And I agree with John with all of that. I think I understand what your what the question is though and what mm. we're we're um, discussing here with all of that. And I would say that it ties into Satanism for me quite quite nicely with uh when we when i tend to say hail satan or something of that matter or even show like the the devil horns or something like that it's it's more of a thing of hailing yourself um of taking care of yourself and everything so i see that as my kind of i guess uh whatever you want to call that um spiritual battery you're recharging it or whatever that it's taking care of myself, putting myself first. Um, and that sounds selfish to a lot of people, but that isn't. That's uh, been made that way uh, by Christianity a good bit. Mm. And if you aren't putting yourself first in that way and um, focusing on your mental health and physical health and um, what you need, then you aren't really able to... to um, be there for the people that you need to be there for in your life so i think that's very important to um to focus on on yourself and do those things interacting with people this being here talking to you guys is is a way of doing that even you know yeah i'll throw this out too selfishness gets a really bad rap but if you really think about selfishness in the in the in the terms of the greater good in the sense of by taking care of myself and prioritizing my needs and addressing them I put less of a burden on the society, right? Like I'm now focused on making sure that I am putting the less amount of burden on society taking care of me because I'm taking care of myself. And if everyone was able to do that functionally, we would all have a greater experience as a community because we all have this accountability to ourselves first, which you know immediately trickles down to a more sustainable uh, yeah. economy. Does not mean taking food from other people because you wouldn't want that to be taken from you. It just means making sure that you can take care of yourself. And there's no spirituality in that at all, is there? (laughs) No, there is (laughs) not. It's reality that you're talking about. (laughs) Right. Yeah, Yeah, it takes the spirit out of spirituality, right? right. (laughs) So it's interesting to note that the Holy Spirit Mm. used to be known as the Holy Ghost Mm. until they decided that was too sort of zombie-like. I I believe even the term spirit to begin with was just, what, like breath of life or something to to that degree? So it wasn't even meant in the sense of, I mean, then there wasn't even, in Judaism anyways, there wasn't the idea of an afterlife or anything of that nature, so it wasn't wasn't really meant in that way. It's Mm. been kind of manipulated throughout the years and everything to describe things that just the the people using the terms don't even understand themselves yeah. what they're talking about usually it's yeah i'm, I'm, I'm going to also combine a little bit of what you're saying slew with what everyone else is saying like the idea of selfishness meaning taking care of yourself there's a mental app there's a mental health aspect to that as well and i find we get a lot of that by being social creatures by being part of a community to an extent and particularly a help a helpful community like uh john richards uh, uh recovery from religion and and the the idea of people coming in together to support a good cause but also just hanging out with friends like what larry says and you know maybe playing some games or yeah. slew as you mentioned finding like a not a quote-unquote religious group in the in the bad bag word bag is sort of way but sort of like a group of people who can come together and do some positive good for a community or for themselves or like have like a, a general favorable view of good mental health and work at it together. What's up, Slew? I'd, I'd like to also say like whenever I'm to give an example of those things pertaining to mental health and everything, I would yeah. say like behavioral issues and things that you might develop throughout uh, even from religion or, or from your childhood or whatever, working through those things to where you're um, – because those could those could affect the people around you, and right. you might not even realize how much that's affecting the people around you. Mm. Um, 
so the thing of to where you could be taking things very personally at times that aren't meant to be taken that way you could be doing different taking things in differently um because you haven't you haven't realized that that's what you're doing that these are things that are are being triggered by past experiences and and um, things that you grew up with or, or things you were subjected to or what, what have you. Right. I also, one of my things that I love when just from hanging out with other people, particularly different points of view people, is that it makes my, the things that irk me seem so much smaller because yeah. I'm now realizing that there's just so many other perspectives that the way yeah. how I see things that I'm in, assuming other people see it the same way isn't the same way. And it just adds so much nuance to the flavor of different kinds of people that makes it more of a rewarding result to not have to think about everybody thinking about the way how I think about things. If that makes any sense, let me put it this way. It's good to realize that people are different and it could be shocking to realize how many different people are there. And when you realize that everyone's different and you can't necessarily put your finger and, and marginalize or generalize every single group of people, it just makes you feel good because now you realize it is still worth getting to know people, regardless of whatever labels they're using. And that just helps me. I fill my spiritual battery, but also just make me a better human being. And I feel like that's my recourse for charging. John Richards, what's up? Well, you're talking about what's been happening recently is mm -hmm. we've all been moving towards the, the glorifying of individuality. And this has been led by the woke movement and uh, cancel culture and so on where everybody is has a right to dis to prevent people saying something that they disagree with and so your your right uh, tie in in that we we need community we want to forget how important we think we are that's egoism and we want to join with groups of people and Slew was right when he talked about behavior, because that's sort of bordering on morality, how you behave. And in, in a lot of conversations, I'm told that behavior comes from a God. Well, no, it doesn't. I'm a human. I behave humanely. <clears throat> hopefully, yep. hopefully that's the assumption, right? <laughs> that's, that's there are a I'm lot of old. inhumane humans, but I get it. I get it. That's George, what I've evolved to do, yes. George Brown, I'd love to understand how you refill your spiritual battery, and what does that mean to you? Well, the word spiritual almost has no meaning to me, because for one thing, uh, having lived in California for 40 years, Northern California, mm. um, that word seems to mean different things to different people, and some of it seems pretty wacko to me having um, sometimes what I what I find is people who are into what they call spirituality come to me for scientific validation of their misuse of science and and I have a real hard time with that mm. so I'm, I'm talking about my own personal experience with people who call themselves spiritual Right. And I have no idea what they really mean by that. Mm. But, um, you know, it's, it's like when one of these people talks to me about a higher vibration, that's when the bats come out of the woodwork, you know, because that, that's, a, that's, that's a phrase that has absolutely no meaning whatsoever. Right. Vibrations aren't higher or lower, you know. Well, they are in the sense of musical pitches, I suppose. Right, but, right, right. right. But mean, it's not what they're referring to. It's not a scientific, it's all pseudoscience in a sense, right? That's right. They're not. And, and um, so, but how do I recharge my batteries? Well, believe it or not, sometimes what I do is I listen to really good religious music <laughs> because it's it's wonderful music and uh, you know i'm talking about bach in particular of course is uh, cantatas in in particular and and um it, it's wonderful I, you know i think if if i were in southern germany at the time when he was writing i would have been a very religious person because of that music and and the way that the music uh, uh, underscores the words so perfectly mm. Mm. but um so that's one way that I can do it. Ironically, 
being an atheist, but, but commiserating with the people who fear God and look to heaven as a, rela as a release from the torment of living on earth. Yeah. You know, and, it's and, no different than enjoying good science fiction because you can accept it for what it is. You don't accept it as the literal, you know, transcendence God inspiring uh, a man to write music. You just see it as like, oh, that's good music. That I also get fulfilled by this. And there's value. Uh, yeah, and I get fulfilled by the, by the visualizations hmm. that the words uh, con conjure up in my mind and, and the empathy I have for the people who are listening to it and really believing it. I mean, it's, it's all beautiful stuff. And so coming from a Jewish background, when I hit these few words that are anti-Semitic, it's mm. like all these things, these alarm bells go off in my right. mind. Right. You know, and, and everything goes tilt. And, you know, I don't know how to relate to that. I mean, there's a lot of other ways that I recharge myself or I try. Right. Like, um, you know, I can meet with Up the design. Oh, that's um, good. Yeah. John Richard. Well, thinking of what George has been saying about the spiritual movement in Northern California, it's mm -hmm. made me speculate whether instead of being shaped like this, okay. a spiritual battery might actually be a pyramid. <laughs> uh, don't get it. It's <laughs> a conversation stopper. It's a conversation stopper. <laughs> So it is, I mean, if you stack enough cell batteries on top of each other, you do get something that kind of looks like that, that black obelisk sort of thing. Oh, so like they, they, yeah. they have, there is this pyramidal thing, isn't there? Uh, where they have crystals and stuff that they, that they think are special of, properties. Anyway, I think we, should, we ought to put out a warning. If you think your spiritual battery needs charging, mm -hmm. the thing not to try at home is sticking your fingers in the socket. Right. Right, right. right. Mm -hmm. Know that you got other chargers that are out there that are better than sticking your finger in a socket. How about that as a closing sentiment? Larry, mind taking us out? I think we had a great conversation on this point. Sure. This is the Digital Free Thought Radio Hour on WOZO Radio 103.9 LPFM here in Knoxville, Tennessee. And we'll be right back after this short break. <laughs> Five, four, three, two. Hello, and welcome back to the second half of the Digital Free Thought Radio Hour. I'm Dowder Five, and we're on WOZO Radio here in Knoxville, Tennessee. Um, that's 1093. Dang, I can't talk. We're on <laughs> WOZO Radio 103.9 LP FM right here in Knoxville, Tennessee. Let's talk all. <laughs> wow. This is Let's talk about the Atheist Society of Knoxville. ASK was founded in 2002. We're in our 20th year. ASK has over a thousand members, and we have weekly in person meetings in Knoxville's old city at Barley's Taproom and Pizzeria uh, downtown in Knoxville. Look for us inside at the high top tables, usually the loudest and happiest group. We also have a Tuesday evening Zoom Ask Meetup. If you'd like to join us on the Zoom meeting, email us at askanatheist at knoxvilleatheist.org or let's chat se at gmail.com. Uh, you can find ASK online at Facebook, meetup.com, or knoxvilleatheist.org, or just Google Knoxville Atheist. It's just that simple. By the way, if you don't live in Knoxville, you should still go to Meetup and do a search for an atheist group in your town. Don't find one. Start, Start one. one. Well, Matt, where do you want to pick up? We're going to go over some listener feedback from last week's episode. Last week, we were talking about, is church just adult daycare? And we had some really fun topics. Uh, Slu joined us for the first time as a Satanist. We have some comments, obviously, because a lot of people are interested about uh, talking about Satanism on the show. We've had Satanists on the show in the past, and, and it's inspired a lot of good conversation. Uh, Slu, I'll direct this to you. We have a listener comment who would prefer to stay anonymous, who says, um, I want to comment about the satanic temple thing. I understand what they mean, that it is a form of rebellion, yet it does not make sense. A theist is someone who believes in gods or gods. An atheist is someone who denies or doesn't believe in the existence of God or gods. Thus, it would be logical that a satanist would be someone who believes in Satan. By linguistic analogy, a, a satanist would be someone who denies or doesn't believe in the existence of Satan. 
Both a church and a temple are places of worship. Thus, it is completely illogical and confusing when a member of the satanic church or a satanic temple claims that they don't believe in Satan and they don't worship Satan and at the same time invoke hell Satan. Who are they fooling? Slow comments. Well, I had mentioned earlier about what what I, the hail Satan thing actually is is in reference to, and it's actually you know it's all symbolic in its in its standing of um, rebellion against uh, authority or of uh, God and all of that. Um, but yeah, um, to say that you okay do pastafarians believe in a, a pasta God do hindu like there's a lot of religions out there that aren't believing in an actual god buddhism i believe that's more of a personal thing where they're referring to buddhas themselves and things of that nature it gets done a lot but uh it seems to be critiqued more with with uh satanism by mm. atheists and by by theists alike mm. i'll throw some i'll throw some uh some uh, i guess you could say support on this as well like my in my press in my opinion, uh, I'm aware that there are two different branches of Satanism. The one where it's like I literally believe in Satan, and the other one where it's like it's more of a commentary on the idea of using these characters from the same book and seeing what sort of problems as a society comes about when you simply pick the other cast of characters as the figures to follow, and what could be the harm associated with it compared to people picking a different cast. And like, like what the, sort of like double standard do we offer to people when we say we respect Christianity? It's like, well, they're it's they're using the same books, like, but they don't get the rights that we should get. It's like, well, why are we have a government that that has divided us in such a way? You know, exactly. Like, and those I believe they're Luciferians are the yeah. ones that are actually theists in that mm, sense. Right. And so, like, I, when someone says they're a Satanist, in my head, it could just as easily mean that they are atheists, but also have taken a very creative approach to highlighting some societal imbalances, particularly institutionalized favoritism for very specific skews of Christianity. And I find that to be, you know, uh, applaudable. Uh, it's something I, you know, deeply respect, right? Uh, Larry, what do you think? It sounded like you were nodding your head or it looked like you were nodding your head. Oh, well, yeah, I... I, I... You know, I hear about Satanists all the time. Uh, as an atheist, uh, I I know a few, yeah. But um, I I always assume that they're atheists. Uh, yeah. I I really don't uh, have much <clears throat> to do with the other ones. The one you were talking about, uh, Luciferians, right? Uh, yeah. But anyway, those people I would have a lot of questions for. Is uh, yeah. Is, is, yeah. Oh, right. I do too. So. <laughs> <laughs> George but, Brown, uh, look like you're raising your hand. What's up? Yeah, um, in my life, uh, I would, and from what you just said, Slu, um, I, I have to say, I agree with the call with the listener. Um, I think that um, uh, Satanists have a hell of an image problem right here because they're all over the map. There's there's no cohesion in what I hear about what a Satanist is. I mean, from what I see in the media, which is what other people are saying about you guys from their perspective, mm. is, is that uh, because you haven't defined yourselves, they're doing the definition for you. And the definition that I get from them is right. that you are anti-religion. You are devil worshipers. I mean the same and sinners about... for that reason and people to be hated on for that reason so i think you guys have to get your image together and get it out there slew what do you think i i would say that um that atheists have had the same thing said about them forever and arn raw just joined um the tst group uh recently um and had spoken out at, at satan con about a lot of these things satan con there's a yeah. satan so yeah, I can they just started this year, but we there is information out there. It would be as simple as somebody going to the Satanic Temple's website and checking the tenets out and things and what it's actually standing for. But people don't want to to bother Educate. to do that a lot of times. So, so what you guys are going through isn't very any any very much different than what the black community has been going through, where you where people will look for white people to define what black culture is and what's important to them. 
And it's a struggle for, you know, black people to claim, no, we don't care about that. It's this stuff that like we would really like to highlight and we would like to share and broaden and grants across other communities, you know, like feel free to take these things and these things aren't the stuff that we care about. Like that's an ongoing conversation in small scope as an idea is like, how do you call, what do you call black people? A lot of people are still calling us African-American in 2020. It's just like Charlize Theron is an African-American. We're black. Please call us, <laughs> please call us black for crying out loud. We're not substandard Americans. We're just black and American. There's a different thing. But also um, I would say, you know, when we look for like even the opinions of how we should think about women, a lot of people will go towards like men's perspectives on women and what men think they should give women rather than listening to what women are saying as well. So it's not uncommon for us to go to the wrong group to hear about marginalized uh, communities. It's something that we have a really bad habit of doing. And it's because those larger established groups have a bigger mouthpiece or, or better PR or better marketing. But we need to be willing to get information directly from, in my opinion, the, the actual source. I, felt, I feel like it's just a common thread of human information gathering. Uh, so listen, I have one more thing I'd like to pick about this comment. An atheist is someone who denies or doesn't believe in the existence of gods or gods. A lack of belief is what essentially, in my opinion, is an atheist. Um, I don't have to deny that a God exists. It's just I don't have to have the act of belief. So I, I could just lack that belief. And someone who denies that a God exists, in my book, is an atheist. That's, an, that's a Gnostic. That's someone who's making a knowledge claim. And they might be an atheist, and they could be, in, in some cases, a theist who are claiming that this God doesn't exist, but my God does exist. That's just, as in my head, a problematic circumstance and not atheism. Atheism is just a lack of belief. What's up, Slu? What do you think? This is something I waver between, and that's whether I'm Gnostic or agnostic with atheism, because <laughs> of anything else that we don't have evidence of, hmm. we we just disregard, and it's not a thing of you know any real you know question about that. Um, and in in science and everything, it's not it's not that way. It's not the the thing of oh, well, you're, you're Gnostic or agnostic when it comes to, um, your, to, to believing in, um, you know, gravity or, or in, you know, all of these different things. It's not, Larry, Larry's on mute. So Larry, you're on mute, my friend. Feel free to take yourself off mute. Oh, sorry. Let's see. Feel free to click. Uh, okay, so. Well, I don't know how I got muted. I have a button on my microphone that's supposed to work for that. You're fine, you're fine. But I also got muted some other way. Anyway, uh, you're using the word agnostic and gnostic in the same sentence that you're using believe. And agnostic doesn't address belief, it addresses knowledge or claimed knowledge. Right. Yeah, like it's a very, it's a very easy um, Punnett square in a sense, where it's just like, if you, if you claim knowledge, you're agnostic. If you don't know, you're agnostic. Right. Or claim that you, but, you know, but also we could say that about any scientific thing. We could say that we don't know 100% that these things are true. But right, to the but, degree that we know these things are true, it's yeah. it's a high degree. Right, now, but you were using Gnostic with belief, not Gnostic with knowledge. That's what that's the point I was trying to make. Right. And Slew, there's some unfortunate feedback on your end. I'm not <clears> sure if we can fix that before you get back in. But John, would you like to make a comment before we move on? Well, I think we're skating. We're skating on two potential topics that are worthy of a whole show themselves. Sure. <laughs> like like Satan and what what knowledge actually is and whether mm. we can have absolute knowledge and which I don't think we can. But anyway, uh, and if we go back to Satan, didn't uh, there's not much evidence of Satan before Christianity, is there? I mean, the Jews had a bit of a, a no, I don't know. I'm, I'm pretty ignorant about Satan, which is why I've got um, Slu lined up to come on my show in the near future, because He's going to educate me on it, hopefully. Hmm. But, but last Monday, I went to Stonehenge. And although various groups worship there at specific times of year, I don't think any of them are Satanists. So 
the, the, then of course, just down the road, there was a pub that was named after, I think a famous, uh, what, I don't know, 16th century author who majored in the idea of the devil. I mm. can't remember what his name was now, but it seems Lucy quite a reasonable thing. Fur? Who? Miss Lucy Fur? <laughs> Okay. I like the pun though. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but it's, it seems to have grown. It's, it started out very, uh, didn't make much impact on humanity, but the, the idea of Satan mm. has grown in profile mm. and, and come big quite sure. recently. You know, recently in like the, the grand scheme of humanity, absolutely. Oh, but I think it only came with the advent of Christianity. Like if Chris, no one cared about Christianity and that never caught on, we would ne be discussing Satanism because yeah. it, even in the Old Testament, not as much of a figure. It's only like in the New Testament, is he like this active component yes. that's like talking yes. with Jesus and hanging out yes. and like being like, you should do this for me. Yeah. Though, and then, then it only became big when this book was written about 500 years ago. And I can't remember the name of the author now. Mm -hmm. and 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 it 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 was a popular trope from then on so i do want to talk about knowledge real quick just before we get into the next part uh knowledge in a scientific sense is what you can demonstrate to be the case if you can't demonstrate it you can't have a uh you're not justified in claiming knowledge and we have very easy examples of this if i said i know french but i can't pass a french test right uh, it's a very poor demonstration that I have knowledge on the idea, but I might pass a French test with a 95%. I may not have absolute idea of all of French and how to speak it, but I can demonstrate knowledge to varying extents. And to that, we would claim some knowledge to there. And that's totally fine. So what I'm looking for when someone claims knowledge is not an absolute idea. Okay. It's more of just, can you demonstrate to a reasonable degree the, the extraordinary claim that you've made? And, and justify it with some reasonable evidence that meets the extraordinary claim that you made to an extent, that yeah, would be yeah. enough to satisfy. And unfortunately, no one's ever done that for either Satan or God. And that's yeah, why yeah. I don't claim to know that they exist because no one's ever made a compelling case for me. And that would make yeah. me an agnostic, period, yeah, yeah. just because I don't claim it. And whether or not I choose to believe after the fact would make me an atheist or a theist. And they are very separate things. Yeah, All right. Yeah. Next comment. Thank you so much for the comment, Mr. Person who wants to stay anonymous. Next comment is, oh no, it's another bad one. <laughs> this one is, uh, nah, guys, you're still getting it wrong. If the Christian God were actually what Christian, or I'm sorry, let me, let me start again. Nah, guys, you're getting it all wrong. If the Christian God were actually what Christians claim he is, there would be no doubt and everybody in the whole universe would worship him by default. So, this is a, a comment from last week's episode where we're talking about if people knew that God exists, would that necessarily mean that people begin to worship that God or just know that that God exists? And my idea is that the devil in the Bible knows that God exists, knows it absolutely has been to hell, even in the book of Job, has hung out with God, has talked to Jesus face to face. He knows that Jesus and God exist, yet doesn't worship God. And so in my opinion, that is, a, if anything, a demonstration that knowledge that a God exists is not proof that you will worship that God. Likewise, if I knew that the Christian God exists, it will, I wouldn't worship that God because that God seems to be a jerk to me and I'll take whatever repercussions come from it. Yet, I would know that that God exists. And so I feel like worship, similar to like knowledge and belief, is its own separate switch that you flick. John Richards, do you agree? Pretty much, yeah. There's sort of two sides to worship, isn't there? There's... Mm. A, a, extreme admiration, you know, like I worship Eric Clapton, for example. <laughs> he's, a good, he's a good player. I'll give it to you. I'll give it to you. I'll give it. Yeah, to you. yeah, yeah. Exactly. But then there is I the change the world. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> then, then there is the worship out of fear, isn't mm. there? And and that's when you decide that the best the best course of action would be to subserviate yourself in front of this terrifying monster. Right. And and I don't want that one. You know, I, if, right. if there's a God, I want him to be a Eric Clapton, <laughs> not a terrifying monster. And the thing is, Eric Clapton is not telling you to worship him, too, right? No, like, yes. in my head, the, anything that claims you must worship me is not deserving mm -hmm. of worship. And like, absolutely. Larry, yes. what do you think? Do you think that's fair? 
Well, <clears throat> yes, I think that's fair. But I also uh, would go in one step farther is I don't believe in the concept of worship. I don't mm -hmm. think it's a, a good thing. Uh, I mean, I believe that some people do worship, obviously. So the concept is there. So I misspoke. But I mean, I don't think it's a good benevolent thing to do. Right. Um, worshiping, uh, it's just, uh, I'm at a loss of words. Uh, it's, it's acknowledging an imbalance of power. Right. Well, no, you could do that with a, a, a bully at school and not worship yeah. him. You know, um, it's putting all your, your praise and energy into uh, praising someone or, uh, you know, supporting them uh, to the exclusion of everything else. Right. Um, uh, divorcing your family to support him, that type of thing. Um, Larry, I'll throw this I, I, I just don't believe it in it. You have a beautiful daughter. You you probably love her more than like anything else in the world, but you would never expect her to worship you in a sense, right? right? Exactly. Or de especially demand it. Right. The things that we love the most, we don't expect worship back because mm -hmm. I don't see that as a healthy thing to for. Not healthy. That's a good that point. It's not healthy. George, what's up? You have a lot of comments. Go for it. Well, I have to get back to to a, a horse that I like to flog, which which is uh, all this drama about the devil. Um, if is God omnipotent or is he not omnipotent? I mean, what's going on here? If God is is over can overpower everything and anything, why is he putting up with all this stuff from the devil? Why does he just smite the devil and be done with it? Because he made the devil. We have no drama. It's the 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 small disclaimer that's in most Bibles is by the way God also made the bad stuff too. <laughs> well, he, according he to made the all Bible, the things he, he did. did. He yeah. said it himself. Yeah, yeah, it's just like, oh wait, who made sin? Oh, it's that guy. Geez, why are we blaming this guy for bad things when it was this guy who made the things, knowing for mm -hmm. a fact that he would make the thing? It's like, uh, mm -hmm. Slu, uh, let's see, how's your audio quality back? And is there excuses in your mind to ever worship something? Um, no, I don't, I don't see it as, is uh, being anything necessary. And like Larry was saying as well, like I have a daughter, I wouldn't expect her to worship me. I, um, if anything, question me, hold me accountable. Right. right. That's the thing. Right. You aren't holding some, you aren't holding that thing accountable anymore whenever you're worshiping it. Right. Um, so that, no, that's nonsense. And I've like, to throw in my own hypothetical with this that I've thought about on my own was what if we got to the point where technology was God to where it was all knowing, all seeing, all, you know, all being AI. omnipresent, everything yeah. else. And we got to the point where, well, atheists would, would have to admit that that's, you know, all seeing, it fits the criteria for that. If we're going to call that a God, mm. then it fits that criteria. And the Christians would have to admit that it isn't their God anymore mm. because, well, well, let me it, let me put it this we way can, um, we know that we made it <laughs> another no, thing about it is you can you can you can still believe in a god uh like i say if i if i were washed up uh, on a, a desert island and found a tribe of, of people who uh, had a totem pole in the middle of their village and they said it was their god and they worshiped it and i'd say well then i'm not an agnostic and not an atheist because there it is you know i'm not an agnostic uh an atheist toward their particular god now if they then wanted to say that their totem pole uh controlled the weather controlled which babies were born or not etc cetera, etc cetera, well then i would be an atheist to that iteration or that definition of their god so sure. you can't just say uh, there are no gods because obviously there you know there are it's items such a nuanced it. thing but i totally Idols. agree the right. better you have example. to come to me with a with a definition of your God right. uh, and then justify it and let me decide whether I believe it or not. So the whole idea is, and I agree with Larry, it's a very nuanced point, but it's like the sun worshipers of the world. There are people mm -hmm. who worship the sun and they say uh -huh. the sun gives life to earth. And it's like, right. I agree. Mm -hmm. And my only issue is I wouldn't call that a God, but I'd call it some. But if you want to call that a God and mm -hmm. you want to say it's sustaining life on earth, it's like, I agree on both those points. I'm not denying that the sun doesn't exist. And I'm yeah. not disbelieving that it doesn't do those things. My issue is, is it necessary and succinct for you to, to call but, that a God? Because it probably back, exists even without that label. What's up? And getting back to the AI or technical God. Yeah. Okay. Well, you could say it's a God because it's all knowing and, and all wise as it were, but it wouldn't fit the bill for the creator God mm. because we created it. You know, it came after the universe and us. Right. So, you know, you have to be more 
specific on your definition. Yeah, if anything, God is a, sort of like this useless term that we can apply to things, whether they're mm-hmm. real or not real, that are obviously most of the cases, most cases, not necessary and sufficient to, to use. Like a lot of people can point out a salt shaker and say, that's the creator of the universe. It's like, you don't need that label. It's like, well, add salt to things. It's like, yeah, it's a salt shaker. Let's just call it that. Just leave it there. Uh, right. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we got salt shakers, we got batteries. Everyone's got messy desks. That makes me feel great. Uh, let's see. Um, so yeah, great comments from last week's show. Thank you so much, everybody. Um, looking forward to this week's as well. We have one last question before we uh, wrap up today's show, and it's whether or not God created atheists. And so, how about this? We'll just do a quick round table. I see George smiling already. Uh, George Brown. Uh, as he gets his stuff together, we'll do a quick round table. Uh, did God create atheists? What? Well, I don't want to spoil the fun here. George Brown, what do you think? Did God create atheists? Let's let's do a quick round table before we're done. I have no idea. Works for me. No John idea. Richards, did God create <laughs> atheists? Well, if there is a God, he created everything. So, yes. Oh, interesting. Interesting. So it's not your fault. So, he's but he started that with an if. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Also, uh, mm-hmm. Slew, I, th- I think you made the best comment of the whole show. It's like the idea of loving myself is not an a question of whether I worship myself or anything else. It's more of am I hold am I questioning it and am I holding it accountable? Because that's truly how a critical mind would love something, right? And I love that. I love that. Put on a T-shirt. Slew, did God create atheists? I I mean, we'd have to define a god first, and then you know. <laughs> We've already went over that. How are we right. going to do that? <laughs> right, right, right. It's a, it's one of those fun questions that just have so many un- unanswered variables in it, right? But hey, it's a fun way to leave off the show. Larry, uh, did God create atheists? And also, I don't know what atheism is it even about. Why don't you explain that to me? <laughs> no, I, I believe that believers created non-believers because you have to have a, a kind of an opposite uh, point to take uh, to be to hold that position and about atheism i do have a book it's called atheism what's it all about it's available on amazon uh, my youtube channel can be found by searching for doubter five or larry Rhodes. my main place on the internet that, that i keep my content is digitalfreethought.com be sure to click on the blog button for a radio show archives atheist songs and many articles on the subject of atheism if you have any questions for the show, you can send them to us at askanatheist at knoxvilleatheist.org or let's chat se at gmail.com and we'll answer them in future shows. If you're having trouble leaving religious beliefs behind, uh, you can get help at recoveringfromreligion.org. Thank you for joining us on the Digital Free Thought Radio Hour. Remember, you can find this on Apple Tunes, Pocket Casts, Amazons, and podcasts everywhere. Just search for Digital Free Thought Radio Hour. If you're watching this on YouTube, be sure to like and subscribe. Remember, everybody is going to somebody else's hell. The time to worry about it is when they prove that heavens and hells and souls are real. Until then, don't sweat it. Enjoy your life, and we'll see you next week. Say bye, everybody. Bye, everybody. Bye, bye. bye everybody. Check out Free Thought Productions, too. Last oh, week. yeah, cool. Thank you. <laughs> you're welcome. All right, see you, everybody.